welcome everyone to deep learning course series uh, lesson number one part five in this lesson we are discussing about tabular and collaborative filtering techniques with deep learning another th stuff is jupyter notebook in fast.ai what is the role of jupyter notebooks we will see in in the detail third is uh, applications of deep learning uh, and the history and the basics of uh, machine learning techniques another thing which is the last one is the general guidelines about how you can go further how you can explore the resources and how you can share your work so these are the following highlights I would suggest everyone to um, go to the resource section and find out the link number 15 to link number 21 and as I said that we are remaking the fast AI course practical deep learning 2022 and notes are uh, provided in Google Drive link number one in the resource section also you can uh, see the des description of this video contains uh, the resource section as well so these are the outline the topics we are going to discuss and these are the links like link number from 15 to 21 everyone should explore this one uh, these links as well and this is for for a slide if you want to download the slide or if you want to download the notes you, you can go here and you can look for for a notes well thank you so much and let's go to lesson number one part five notes which i have prepared for you so i will switch here and here you can see first of all uh, we are discussing as I said before about tabular uh, techniques tabular data set the tabular data set which means that the data set you will have will be in the form of the table and it is widely used in the industries um, in this case we are having input in the form of spread, spreadsheet databases excel sheet could be an excel sheet uh, like kind of dot csv file dot xlsx file uh, the examples are like typically these are uh, these are the problems uh, are related to kind of prediction system so we don't have images anymore in this case we have the tables as an input in this case and for example like uh, you are living in a city and you want you are working for a company and this company have given you some data about statistics of, of the particular city and you are predicting uh, the number of buses in the city this is one of the problem one of the example another stuff is uh, tabular analysis which is uh, in a tabular analysis which is income prediction which Jeremy have discussed in this case uh, we are having uh, the same way of modeling but if you will see the entire data what it does is it will take an input uh, kind of input from a user in the form of uh, URLs so like in the same way what uh, the input we were having uh, the kind of links we are having we were having for images so in this case we we are having URLs to download the data set and entire data will uh, decompress it for you so there is a tabular class you can see here this one uh, tabular data loaders from CSV and what it does is um, it will uh, do the following things it will take the path of dot csv file and y names uh, another argument which is uh, like you have to tell which column you want to predict in a uh, excel sheet and you have to specify the categorical columns in excel sheet or categorical names in dot csv file or in in the um, excel sheet so what what is happening actually so uh, categorical names are the kind of columns which have the limited uh, kind of divisions uh, and limited uh, output for example uh, the values of your uh, relationship 
could be like you could you could be married or either unmarried or you have your own children and this is a limited set of values so categorical columns contains the limited set of value and non categorical which are like we are saying continuous values are kind of like for example you have a age 23 and half 46 and half 22 or like a continuous value so there is a difference between the kind of uh, columns contains continuous and um, categorical values well so for example here is uh, we are showing the data set there is a work class which is uh, which could be private local government and this is a categorical column in our case and if we will see the batch the same way we we have seen uh, we seen like after data loaders we seen uh, images in the bird recognition system this is exactly the same thing and what first fast AI uses is um, a popular kind of uh, library which is Julia uh, is a kind of I think a language and this will automatically structure data in the right way regardless of what kind of data you are having whether you are having a data in the form of images or you are having a data in the form of excel file in the table or any kind of data so we are we are using this in a fast AI library and show batch uh, on something provided useful information um, and in this way you can visualize about your data set and if your data set has been loaded you can also verify that it has if it has been loaded uh, correctly or not in our case like the columns you have seen here uh, these columns are uh, not uh, kind of it's a kind of input is uh, kind of uh, you can say dependent columns in our case so dependent columns are the kind of columns which are used to predict the independent column so in our case our independent column is like prediction of salary and dependent columns are demographic information or other columns that are used to predict uh, the salary range of a person so I will show you some more examples so there is another thing which is uh, uh, so before that we will see how we can train the tabular kind of data and the training is the same like we have seen before in a bird prediction system in this case we have we don't have vision underscore learner we have uh, tabular underscore learner so this is a general way how you can train the data set in fast AI so you have to write what kind of data set you are having is a tabular and underscore the learner uh, to train the data set second thing is about fit one cycle and fine-tune in the Previously we were having fine tune, uh, and I will explain to you why we, we how when when will be the situation we will use fine tune and when will be the situation we will use fit one cycle. So, so why we are using here fit one cycle and what does it mean? And we are passing to which means like the number of iterations. So learn underscore fit one cycle in this case. So why it is that so because in tabular data set a table kind of data set don't have pre-trained model this is the first of the reason and every table is a different so there are no general features we can learn but in images we have pre-trained model which is available to us and the pics are somehow similar generally like for example if you want to classify human um, if some if if there is a human or if there is a animal, you can uh, you can understand like uh, you can train your model. Uh, you can have a pre-trained model that is trained on animal. So animal are having eyes and human are having eyes as well. So uh, 
so images are having the kind of general features where we can learn from and now I will show you the tutorial of how you can do experiment with double or data set so for this what you need to do is you have to go to link number 15 here and click if you will click here you will see there is an example fastai.tabular.all and this is one of the example we have just seen yes uh, in a note so you can have a look here and you can do some experiments and with your own data set as well so this is just to show you like a kind of tutorial to show you how you can do the experiment and this is the link you can have a look okay so let's go back to uh, our notes so let's talk about this so now we are having another example of tabular data set which is collaborative collaborative filtering we discussed before in our objectives so it is kind of recommendation system so how it works one of the example of this one is uh, for example um, you have a data set like which user likes which kind of products and which user used which project uh, which, which products so this is input in the form of data set is available to you and you have to guess what are the other products those user might like uh, and based upon that you you can find similar user as well and what those similar users like so what is generally happening is so we try to find out the kind of similar user and their likeness and their what they dislike and based upon the similar user we are having we are trying to find an others user which are similar to those users so this is what happening in collaborative filtering example so um, as I said before like uh, so the classification for the similar user or clustering for a similar users through collaborative filtering is not based upon like demographically but like based upon other similar users so you cannot say that uh, if I'm sitting uh, if I'm living in a same city and another person is living in a same city we would like the same things so this is this would not be like that another example is you are using music system like for example Spotify Apple music and they ask you from like few pieces of music you like and based upon uh, what you have liked the kind of music they will recommend other music as well which is kind of similar to that music or like they can cluster you um, they can make a group of you they would put you in a kind of group that like the similar kind of uh, songs and what those users uh, your companions in a group like uh, the kind of um, you can say the songs so here in this case we will go through we we are again having antar and we are having this uh, data set and we in this case we are having collaborative uh, collab data loaders is another class of data loaders and it will just take the path which is uh, rating.csv path of the file and this is how it works and to there is a one difference so to train the collaborative filtering data set um, we have to specify the range of the values continuous value so the range of value in our case is because it is a movie recommendation system so uh, we are in this case uh, predicting about the user's rating so what user will rate about the particular movie so we are predicting that and here we used fine tune you can either use fit one cycle or you, you can either use the fine tune there is no problem in that so <coughs> another thing which is really important is uh, the third point in our case we are using valid loss which is like mean square error for this one so the uh, our evaluation measure in bird recognition system was uh, ac accuracy 
but in this case we are using mean scare error you you can search about this in a google what is mean scare error and the error like uh, so we have to see what is the uh, how it will get lower so for example if you see the number of epochs we are having uh, 0 1 2 3 4 with the time uh, the validation loss got reduced at first it, it was 1.3 and it is reduced to 0 0.6 which is pretty fine so we can compromise on that so if you another thing if you want to visualize the results so how you can do it so, the, so there is a function to see the results so as we we will see learn dot show results it will give you the user id and the movie id and the actual rating actual rating means like what was actually available rating correct rating in a data set and what our prediction system predict so in this case we were having the actual rating which was 4.0 what user has given but the predicted uh, rating by a model is 4.4 which is uh, pretty well I think it's there is no much difference because mean scale error is 0 0.6 so could be 4.6 at max in this case well we will see another thing is at 0 is like the index number 0 and 4.0 as I discussed before and let me give you a tutorial on collaborative full training so we are so if if you will go to link number 16 in the resources of the slides you can find out the example of collaborative full training and there are in this case we are seeing the other arguments as well over here and this is for a movie and you can visualize the data and you can see the show batches and there is a y range over here which is like 0 to 5.5 in this case which is a bit different from what we have seen and you can just like you can read it and you can do experiment and you can again in the same way for what you have done for bird classification and tabular data set for um, cell reprediction system so now this is another part of this video which is like a discussion about Jupyter Notebook and one of the feature we we will discuss about Jupyter Notebook is RICE uh, extension in a Jupyter Notebook which turns your Jupyter Notebook to the slides so how it works so what you will need to do is first you will search rise jupiter in a google and it will put you it will give you some links for installation and if you will open it rise.read.docs.io slash uh, table this link if you go with this link and you you will see the guidelines how you can install it the next thing is there is an interesting feature which is uh, called slide types after when you will install in your local machine uh, this extension you can see you can uh, see there is a slide type I will show you in the picture so there is a slide type so we are having slide sub slide fragment and skip and notes as well so you have to tell uh, this slide type is what and based upon that it will show you the cell of the notebook uh, according to the type of slide so for example I will give you one demonstration um, so for example so let's say you have two cells so in this picture we have the cell number 23 and we have given this cell a slide type is a slide and another cell is uh, which is cell number 24 has a type which is fragment and if you will 
so when you will like run this Jupyter notebook in a slight version but you will see so when you will be in the cell number 23 so you will see the cell like this because this is a slide and this is independent of everything every cell but because slide number 4 is a fragment type it will get attached to the slide number 23 here so this is the second look uh, what we are having if you press right well so there are a lot more we are having in fast AI a lot more applications are developed with Jupyter notebooks for example if we talk about uh, this book deep learning for coders fast a uh, fast root AI uh, the entire book has been written in Jupyter notebook so for example uh, first of all let me show you uh, the extension about the extension and then I will show you uh, the free version of fast AI fast book and you can see uh, the whole book is written in Jupyter notebook and we will go to the uh, intro the first chapter which is the intro chapter and if you will click to this chapter for example I will show you first here in the form of pictures if you go to this URL this website fast AI fast book and there is a chapter which you can find out which is the chapter number one and it is uh, you can see the type of this chapter is ipython notebook and the next thing is uh, you can see like a lot of people have done contribution uh, which is uh, really impressive like uh, to contribute on this book well so so let's discuss uh, about uh, Jupyter notebook extension which is rice so you will go to the Google like this and you can search about rice Jupyter and here you can see there is a link and you can even go to the slide we are having here so I have mentioned the link here as well the link number 17 you can go here and check it out Another thing is about fast AI, which is the I think link number. I haven't mentioned that link. Well, so what you can do is you can go to the Google fast AI fast book and go to the GitHub. And here you can find out the chapter number one. There are like 50, 25 contributions by the different people and this is all written in Jupyter Notebook. And this is a chapter one of the book. Well, so let's get, uh, get back to the notes. So we discussed about how, what are the types of fragments, what are uh, the slide types we are having the cell number 23 the cell number 24 and with the fragment and what is the difference between fragment slide type and what is the difference between non fragment which is like kind of slide and the fragment is always integrated to the slide type we are having okay so another thing which is really interesting that all Jupyter notebook um, are you used to make fast AI library so if you will go to this link which is docs.fast.ai you can see the documentation about how library was developed and all is as I said it's in the Jupyter notebook so uh, I will go to this link later on but first of all I will discuss with you a bit in detail so what you will do is you will go uh, you will search in a Google fast AI slash fast AI and in this case you will directly go to the uh, notebooks and this notebook name 00torch.core which is a uh, kind of library uh, can, uh, and it is all written in the Ju Jupyter notebook and you can actually the f 
uh, last thing is you can actually the explore exploration of you can actually have the exploration of the code and with that code you can see the actual images what is the output of that code so the nice thing about fast a library is it is also actual demonstration of actual things the code with according to the output we are having next thing is uh, blogging so all the blogging uh, as you can see the Jeremy has a love for doing blogging so fast I also provide a new way to do blogging so you can search in uh, you can search like fast pages and in the fast pages you will click on this link fast pages notebook blog post this link here and when you will click here you will go to this uh, blog which is in HTML but actually it is Jupyter Notebook which is converted to HTML and here you can see the actual demonstration of the cell contains code so if you will see here this is a cell contains a code and you can also have a look to actual graphs as well so now I will show you uh, another thing which is uh, like if you want to make a contribution if you uh, want to make a contribution to fast AI libraries how you can do with the Jupyter notebooks as well so there are like testing and integration which is also in uh, the form of Jupyter notebooks so what you can do is to search it out uh, you will go to for example uh, you will go to this link uh, github.com slash fast AI slash fast book and if you will go here you will click on the action button and the next thing you will find out there are dev notebooks which contains a lot of tests for, for example when you will make a contribution to fast AI notebook uh, fast book when you will make a contribution like for example you are updating a code and you find out something good and you want to add something to the book so it will have to run your notebook your actual notebook have to go through some tests so which is automatically it will judge that if your notebook is right to make a contribution in fastbook or not so there will be a lot of tests you can see so let me show you first um, about fast book about fast a library so you will search here in a google fast ai you will go here no. so you will search like github fast ai and this is the library fast a library and here you can find out the notebooks you're having so for example if you will click here you can find out so zero zero torch core the same I discussed with you so these are like the actual code fast AI library along the outputs and you can see the docu documentation store docs dot fast AI and I think like I have mentioned the link as well so here you can find a link so there is a link if you want to make a contribution so link number 19 you can go here and check it out so here is the documentation of the code you can see here and you can scroll it down like this and you can see what are the available resources we are having within the library the next thing is which is fast pages notebook blog and you can go to this link which is like test.html but actually this one is a notebook which is converted to a blog and we are having codes the cell contains code like this uh, along their output and here you can see the output of this code is this graph and you can even have a look 
to the data set and you can visualize it so there are a lot of stuff have been done in fast AI and you can explore it so now we will discuss about what we can do with deep learning so with deep learning um, as you can see that this uh, nowadays deep learning is highly marketed in technology uh, marketed technology and in 2014 it was not well hyped but still we are in the process of scratching this iceberg and there there wasn't reliable way to get start with at that time in 2014 but now like for example with fast ai you can have a pre-trained model to get start and you have uh, downloaded weights which are uh, the pre-trained model which is uh, available for you uh, like we we have seen this uh, in an image net and what we mean that uh, we are still scratching the surface and people working on a different domains thought to apply like for example uh, people working in a medical industry thought to apply the uh, prediction system th thought to apply deep learning techniques uh, in predicting something and people are doing well and they like break state of the art result in their particular domain so that we mean about like um, we are still scratching the surface and we are still doing uh, research in the field of deep learning and uh, deep learning has been applied to the different domains a few months later uh, like for example if somebody is applying uh, deep learning techniques and few months later they come up with the answer that I applied uh, this technique and we got a very we have broke state-of-the-art results and the data could be in the different forms so for example if I talk about my research my data was uh, the sensor data and we we have to recognize the human activity the head activity so for example the head is the right or the head is in the left so I applied deep learning techniques to to that to get a prediction of uh, transition between activities and here in the images like uh, I will show you so deep learning has been applied to natural language process so for example you can apply deep learning techniques to answering questions speech recognition searching in an article and in a computer vision uh, it has been applied to satellite or drawn image images for example one of the interesting things which i have seen that um, drones uh, are used to detect uh, fruits in a tree this is one of the interesting example with the deep learning it is possible now and drones are automatically picking those fruits from the trees and this was one of the nice startup i have seen um, which uh, which is the application of deep learning and it has been applied to the medicine as well for example my first research article was published uh, back in 2019 uh, it was on skin cancer skin lesion detection system and we were having a data in the form of uh, images and there were like skin images contains uh, if it is benign or malignant Im images so there are like x-ray images as well where you can find anomalies if there is a kind of area where um, uh, like your bone is broken or not so you can find out with deep learning as well so in the biology you can uh, work on folding proteins classifying pro the type of protein and in the image generation so there are like generative models which are quite hyped today so for example uh, if you want to generate a music if you want to colorize the images if you want to generate images fake images so fake data set you can even generate with deep learning but there are like data ethical course so you should be conscious you should be uh, concerned about how you should use uh, synthetic data 
another thing is which is recommendation system so you can work for a company which is quite famous in the industry like uh, which user will uh, like you can develop a prediction system in which you can tell like which user will buy which kind of product or like what kind of web search a user can do in playing games robotics and there are like a lot of stuff is going on and generally spe speaking uh, deep learning is applied to many areas and like you can think of like if uh, you want to make a kind of system where like you need a human you can apply deep learning techniques to replace humans <laughs> okay it took a long, long time to get to this point so we will discuss about a bit history of deep learning deep learning is incredibly powerful and back in 15 uh, 1957 in the picture you can see there is a laboratory uh, to make a perceptron uh, system a perceptron at Cornell laboratory in 1957 and this is like kind of neural network you can see there are a lot of connections and this is actually the basis of the deep learning how it gets started and deep learning has not been changed but now we have more computational resources for example GPUs, GPUs are used and more data we are having right now and there are a lot of people who have contributed to develop the libraries uh, the resources the data uh, as we discussed before that that uh, you can now download it to uh, download the way it says well so people have contributed a lot from 1957 and let me discuss with you a general idea about basic machine learning techniques so we are going to describe general idea here uh, in the late 50s by Samuel and the idea is shown in the form of the pictures uh, so there are like a general computer program uh, we are having input and there is a program that will produce the results so same this is uh, a workflow of a typical deep learning model after training works so how these graphs are generated in a Jupyter notebook so we are using a graph based library so here is a, here is a syntax to create uh, this kind of graph so if you will have a look a deep look so gv2 gv2 and this is a program and with the shape box type and the width of that box and the height and inputs program and results so we are having three dimensional kind of box uh, well so this code resulted this picture actually so in pre deep learning era there were like inputs and there were like program which contains a bu bunch of loops if else condition and we were producing results but now in machine learning we have two additional things so now inputs along the inputs we are having weights and program is changed to model and then there is a result so model in a machine learning is a mathematical kind of function and this model could be a neural network uh, and so generally what typically it works at so this model contains a neural network and neural network contains lot of layers so for example in the layer war one uh, you can have a list of weights in the form of numbers which is applied to the uh, input you are having so images are actually the numbers so so we are having typically inputs multiplied by weights and we take the sum and then we produce the output so if you have multiple layers you can pass the output one of the layer one and send it to the layer 2 so so weight 1 in the layer 2 will be multiplied by output 1 and up to so and uh, weight n multiplied by output n and you can even have more layers so you can pass it to the layer number 3 and this is how uh, the workflow of neural network uh, has been stated to you the initial state what initially what we do is we start with the weights 
jar initially random and model initially does not do anything so how it works so let's see the workflow of neural network for any kind of model so first you will take an input and the weights could be random numbers and then uh, you will multiply them and pass to the model so these inputs and weights are passed to the model which could be a CNN convolutional neural network or neural network simple neural network the second thing is you will get a results from the model third thing is you will calculate the loss so for example let's say we have we are we were having a classification system of birds initially the model uh, you were having the picture of the bird which was not actually the bird so in the first iteration your model predicts the image of bird as a forest and forest images as a bird so your model is not for example initially is not correct so what we say to the model is you are wrong and we will calculate the loss function for example uh, we can calculate the loss function is uh, checking the accuracy of the model could be and and we will have the accuracy function that calculates the percentage of photos correctly predicted for example you have 100 photos and model is predicting 12 photos which is fine like 12 out of 100 photos correctly predicted so the accuracy of the model in this case is 12 person because we just we were able to predict 12 images out of 100 images in a correct way so now we need to make an update in a model so the next next thing is when we will take a feedback from a loss function and we will update the weights here and uh, we will again after making an update we will uh, again check the model through the weights and the new sets of weight which will be we hope will be better than the previous weights we are having and this way uh, the loss function should be should have the less value so for example at first the loss function was having the value 0 0.12 uh, so for example um, previously the loss function was so high so we were having 0 0.80 value but after update in the weights we are having the loss function which is reduced from 0 0.8 to 0 0.5 so model is 50 percent correct in that case so with the feedback from the loss function every time we update the weights and to make the model better and after few iteration it will become even better and better so we will keep on updating the weights by having a loss feedback from the loss function and we will keep on updating this after few iterations we will have the weights which are really suited for these inputs and the model accuracy becomes 93 percent so model is now 93 percent uh, better 90, uh, having a accuracy 93% so model is correct well so as you know the model is uh, computable functions so by follow uh, by following that mechanism we can solve any kind of function so for example if you want to translate English to Chinese you can make a computable functions so there are like not kind of normal computable functions you studied in your high school uh, these are like a little bit uh, you have to understand this better uh, you have to learn about how it works so we will we will see we, we will scratch this iceberg and we will see in details how this workflow actually works so first like you just need to have a general idea what inputs are what weights are what model is and the results and the loss function and the update with that so so in theory like you should be given a data and enough time so you can solve any kind of computable functions by solving these steps so what happened after training so 
so this is a training part so when you train the data we will replace this image with this one so we don't need loss function anymore because we have evaluated everything and the weights would be integrated to the model and we have after training we have this picture so what we need to do is we will just pass input to the model and model will predict the result for us so now we will take inputs and uh, in the fast AI there is there was a function if you remember learn dot predict in which we passed the image of bird to check whether if it is a bird or not so this is the function we were having in fast AI library so once it is trained we will call the function to get outputs and deploying machine learning is easy with fast AI so uh, so you need one line of code which is learn dot predict and you will and after that like you can do the fit one cycle or fine tune your code and this is how pre-trained models map input to the output so to be a successful in this course there are like general guidelines you need to remember so you need to follow this so those who know the python and notebooks so let me tell you you have been entered to the very big thing there are a lot more that will come so we are not learning python but resources are available you can find um, in the forums.fast.ai about the resources available to learn python and there are a lot of links so for example if you go to this post in forums.fast.ai these are the resources to make an experiment so what is a suggestion for you is do some experiments with Kaggle notebook for example try to make change like for example we were having bird versus forest classification system but you can add house as well so you can make a change in a code and you can make three classification three categories bird house and forest classification or what, whatever you want to do like whatever is fun for you you can make an experiment and if you will have any problem you can come back to to the forum and discuss what the problem you are facing and people will reply you in the forum and there is a free help available for you through fast AI and one thing is uh, I will discuss with you which is really interesting about you can share your work in fast AI and there are like some examples people have uh, shared their work and they got a jobs offer uh, their articles got published they shared about this in in the forums and they become like proficient in fast in deep learning in fast in learning fast AI so this person classified different types of trained uh, Trinidad and Tobago people so they were like uh, so this person with fast AI classified different type of people and so this is the work kind of work shared by the student and for Jeremy he said that it was really interesting to see the research articles and to see the people grow and this one is uh, another thing is this one is a state of cucumber what what what's the kind of state of cucumber whether it is uh, zucchini if it is cucumber or um, this is this kind of classification system has been developed by another student one of the interesting thing which I really like is uh, and very important is a satellite in through satellite images you can check the cities which which is the city uh, we are having so in China we were having Mongolia this is a like through satellite images you are classifying the cities so we were uh, in this case we are having 110 cities 110 categories we are having in this kind of problem and they got 85% of accuracy with ResNet 34 model which is pretty well 
and there is a Panama City bus classification system and few students move to disaster resilience based images of satellites so for example uh, if you see to these images this satellite image and they are like colors which is which specify the state of the building through satellite images and it is it is really interesting to detect those buildings uh, yellow which means incomplete uh, buildings are incomplete red means the foundation and green means buildings are completed so like just trying to check out the state of the building through this okay this was discussed before uh, sound classification system through images and this article got published and it, it has beaten the state of the art results before another interesting application by a student of fast ai alina who, who did tumor normal sequencing uh, at human longevity international and did three different interesting piece of uh, cancer work during the first course and beat the state of the art results and this one is uh, is a kind of application developed in a company called Glab a software uh, at Sp Splunk sorry Glab who developed this one is a software developer and this Splunk company is very is a quite big company and this is a project by the student who turned into the uh, into the product at Splunk and they made a big blog for post for that and what was the purpose of this like there are like uh, as I discussed before in I think the lesson number one part one so there are like movements of the mouse with the clicks in the form of dots and in the form of images we represented the speed of the mouse as well for example like if you look to this images uh, these images so different colors and with along the lines specify the speed of the mouse and what you are like uh, catching through that is uh, the fraud aster with the behavior of bi biometrics so through mouse movements you can detect uh, the kind of users different kind of users and one of the student who made a startup through uh, fast AI is um, he was trying to help visually impaired people and there is much more like you can explore in forums so I will show you so if you go to the forums dot fast dot AI so I have shared my work as well but if you go to share your work and this is a part one 2022 can share your work you can see like people who, are, who developed different things through fast AI and this is really interesting like you are classifying the kind of map well wow. and the error rate is 0 0.07 in this case so a lot of interesting stuff you can see here and you can even and the last thing is I have developed this website as well here you can find lesson number zero lesson number one part one my introduction and this is like kind of organized way so I will upload this video soon so thank you so much for your time and uh.